So if you stand and look at your palms and join them together like this, do you see a crescent that lines your palms? A half moon crescent? Because if you do, it's unusual. Not everybody has that. And it speaks of all, for very, very specific things. Things that are eventualities in your life. Now, if you get an alignment with this and you begin to expand this, like I will show you how to in this video, then the world will be your oyster. What that means is you will be aligned with your destiny. You will begin showing up in the right place at the right time, having all of the right connections. It will feel like you are walking on sunshine. Now, before we go down a musical rabbit hole, Let's kick into today's content. Let me unpack the things you will experience and express through your life if you in fact have the crescent moon across the palms of your hand. And hang with me through until the fourth and final one because this is where the integration happens. Come and let me tell you all about it. Well, hello, you gorgeous soul. You light body here with a purpose, with destiny to fulfill, with dreams yet to express through your own journey. Friends, my name is Ben. I love you and I'm thankful for you. I'm here all of the time encouraging you in this sort of content. So make sure you are subscribed that we are journeying together. Now I want to talk to you today about something from palmistry. We know that energy is everything and everything is energy. And the very palm of your hand is energy that vibrates at frequency. It is an expression of the life force that is vibrational energy. There is nothing that exists that doesn't come from vibrational energy energy, everything at its subatomic level, whether it's a mood or a thought or something like a chair that you sit on or indeed the palm of your hand or the car that you drive or the food that you eat or the waves rolling upon the sandy beach or the birds singing in the morning air. Everything is constructed of energy and energy moves through form. It takes on form, it expresses form, and it moves through form. It can't be created or destroyed. It simply always has been, and it always will be. And isn't that peculiar language? In fact, it almost sounds like the language that religion uses to describe a god, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, sovereign, cannot be created, cannot be destroyed, always has been and always will be. But this is the very same language that science uses to describe vibrational energy. Science says that energy vibrates at frequency and that it is the frequency that carries information. Science says that this energetic form of information cannot be created or destroyed it is simply transmuting through form into new form, flowing into other forms. It says it always has been. It always will be. Now, doesn't that sound like a strange coincidence? Your expression of your own DNA, it's energy. And in the palms of your hands lie secrets untold. Have you ever heard the saying, you can hold the world in the palm of your hands? Well, friend, it's true. There is a root of truth in that. Your entire world is within the palm of your hands. And I want to show you something today. For those of you who, when you put your hands together, form a crescent or a half moon from your little finger and rising up, this signifies four very important points in your life. In fact, three very important points. The fourth and the final is where you integrate and move in to your destiny as a conscious vessel of this new understanding. The first thing it speaks of is creativity. Do you find yourself a creative person? Do you find you become frustrated or you feel dissatisfied or less than enough 
in the face of somebody or something that stifles your creativity. Now listen to me because I'm talking to you. This doesn't necessarily mean you sit down at an easel with watercolors every afternoon. This does not mean there's a burning desire within you to paint portraits, to draw with pencils, to do mosaics. That's not what creativity encompasses. It's just part of the story. So many of you are creative in so many ways, but you don't understand it in and of yourself. You are creative in the IT space with computers and software engineering and programming. You are creative on this very platform. I know some of you, like my brother Grant, you are creative on this platform. Some of you, like my brother Dan, you are creative when it comes to building the groove on the bass guitar. Some of you are creative in the way that you express love to people and allow them to be lifted up by your energy. Some of you are creative with the way that you write and the way that you use your words and you take great pride in, in being a wordsmith, in selecting and weighing the words that you choose. This is creativity. When you start to become cognizant of your creativity, it opens the door to a new level for you. My encouragement is for you to begin looking for the evidence of this inside of your journey and yourself and to begin expanding on it. Walk the journey gently with yourself and you will see opportunity begin to come your way. Don't fear it. Don't think, I can't do that. I, I don't have the skills or the skill set to do that. Don't discredit the truth in the palm of your hands. The second thing that is likely to be your portion is physical attractiveness. Are you good looking? So many people, they say, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm not attractive. I'm just plain Jane, I'm just normal. And yet they have such beautifully defined facial features. My eldest son, he has really, really well-defined facial features. He's got great lips. He's a really good looking young fella. In fact, both of my kids are. My youngest, he just turned 14. He's got beautiful golden locks. They are white blonde. He's a great kid. I wonder if you can stand in front of the mirror and begin loving yourself enough to admit that there are parts of you, sure, you might like to change if you were the author of this story, but can you see parts of you that are actually attractive? Look into your eyes. Do you see parts of you that are good looking? Now, this is not pride. You can say this in humility. You can say, you know, I really like my arms. I like my shoulders. I'm thankful for my nose and my eyes. I'm thankful for the shape of my jawline. I'm thankful for my skin. I'm thankful for my fingers, my toes. Maybe you've got really great pegs, a great set of legs. Well, be proud of them. Not to be shallow, but understanding that this is the vessel your spirit drives and there's nothing wrong with your spirit driving a good looking vessel. Now, the third thing that this speaks of in your life is intellect, but at a deep level, this is not intellect like an IQ score. You might have been a C average student at school, but there's something that really rings your bell and you are expert in this field. You've heard the theory that it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert, a master at something. Well, you've you've got that level of expertise and more. It might be it might be in uh, in writing or creating or or music or the arts or or, or transport or engineering or, or or whatever it might be. If you find that there is a specific intellect that carries you. And as you look back over the stories of your life, you see how this one thing, maybe it's a skill set you have in walking into a room and owning it. Maybe it's a skill set you have around people and being able to meet with them at their level, conversing and mixing in all circles. That requires deep intellect. Now here's where the integration happens. This is the fourth and the final thing. If you have these moons, these crescents in the palms of your hand, it's all well and good for me to stand here and to tell you in exacting detail what it means for you in your life and in the unfolding of your journey. And that's great. 
because you can go and you can look for the evidence of it and expand it. But where the value is greatest is in understanding the truth of point four. And that is this. The crescent moons in the palms of your hands means you have the distinct ability to withdraw from the outer, to go within and to find tranquility within. Now that reminds me of a beautiful song. I was just listening to it the other day. I went for a cruise in my old Jag and I was listening to some great old CDs that I had on the go. And there's a song, Sailing by Christopher Cross. Holy mackerel, what a masterpiece. Do you know the song? It's a beautiful song. Anyway, I don't know why we went down that musical rabbit hole, but our tranquility, that's right, that's it says. You can find tranquility. The canvas can do miracles, just you wait and see. Believe in me. Man, that's a good song. I'm gonna go listen to it after this, so let's wind this up. There is tran tranquility to be found on the inside of you. Now what the world teaches us is to go and look outside, look into relationships, try and find your peace in your job, try and find peace in a relationship, try and force somebody else to be responsible for your own peace. Now we've all done that, haven't we? We've all said, I, I don't feel peaceful and it's your fault, or I, I should feel peaceful and you're not delivering that to me. The responsibility of this lies nowhere except within. And for those of you who have the crescent moon in the palm of your hand, the tranquility you need to traverse any season comes from within. If you will begin to expand that by focusing on the tranquility on the inside, how do you do that? Go and put a pair of headphones on and listen to Sailing by Christopher Cross. And while you are doing that, breathe deeply and focus on the tranquility that lies within yourself. Think about what that word means and what it means to you and find your tranquility within. As you do and you nurture it, it will begin to express itself in the outer world. And this will take you from where you are now to the place where all of your dreams are already waiting for you. This is like a magic carpet ride. It's the final piece of the puzzle and the place where all of the integration happens. So my friend, now that you know exactly what these things mean, what are you going to do? Are you going to invite tranquility by going within and nurturing your own inner conversation, being gentle with yourself, finding your tranquility, stepping up onto that cloud of tranquility and floating through the rest of your days? Or are you just going to wake up in the morning and get straight into the stress of the day, get straight into the arguments of the day, the fears of the day. Friends, we've been there, we've done that, we've done it too many times, it's time to move forward. Something has to shift and you are responsible for it. The world, huh. you hold the world in the palm of your hands. I love you. I hope that this has encouraged you today. Please make sure that you are subscribed so that we can journey together and I'll see your beautiful face again real soon. Peace.